Okay guys, today's project is going to be replacing the engine on my Yerf Dog 3203 go-kart. Yesterday, my kids decided to run the old Tecumseh 6.5 horsepower that comes with the Yerf Dog without oil in it. I know fault of their own, but uh, that did not end very well. Um, I actually did take the engine apart just to mess around with it, and the uh, piston was seized to the block. Uh, no shocker there. So what I'm going to do today is I'm replacing this with the the Harbor Freight 6.5 horsepower Predator engine that you see here. I found out about this online. Apparently a lot of people are, are getting this engine because it, it fits so easily and requires so little work to replace, which is absolutely the truth. Uh, this engine's only about $120, which actually blows my mind. I picked it up from Harbor Freight locally, called them. They had 63 in stock. So apparently it's a popular engine. And um, a perfect fit for the Yerf Dog. Um, it's got some protections on it that the old one didn't have, such as it's got overheating protection as well as a low oil protection, so things that would have come in handy. Now, the first thing you're going to notice that, uh, that needs to be done is that if you notice the pull start is actually pointed the wrong direction, or at least it's not pointed the same direction as the original, um, you probably can make that work, but you'd probably end up destroying your knuckles. So the first step that I'm going to do before I do much of anything with this engine is I'm simply going to spin the pull starter around so that the uh, so that it points out the other direction. And the engine's actually designed so that you can do this. Um, if I get a little closer here, um, you can see that they, there are multiple bolt holes so that you can spin it um, and have it line up in other directions. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spin this and have it point out the other direction. Okay, now you can see I've gotten all three bolts out. They are 5 sixteenths. Um, so all three have been removed. Now I'm simply going to spin gonna spin this around just a little bit till the holes line up in the other direction. And this is going to basically have the pull start pointing in the same direction as on your original Tecumseh that came with the Yerf Dog. So just a little bit of a spin there. That's about perfect. And then I'm going to put the screws back in and that's about it. You'll also notice I pulled the sticker off just because it would drive me crazy if it went pointing in the right direction. Okay, now that we've got that done, you see I put the sticker back on correctly, otherwise that would drive me wild. You'll also notice that I'm using the box that it came in. Uh, it makes a real nice uh, shelf to put it on. You can just really just penetrate it with the shaft on the other side and uh, holds it real nicely, keeps it off the ground. So pull starts pointing in the right direction and the next step is going to be mounting it to the old uh, um, Yerf Dog cart. Um, now, as you can see over here, I actually took the uh, plate that holds the driven unit of the torque converter off and cleaned underneath it. Um, you don't have to take this plate off at all. You can leave it like it was. Um, it has two bolts at the back, the very far back, that you don't have to take off. But I did just to clean it. Um, and the old one, we're going to set it on top, and it'll mount perfectly. Okay, got the engine all mounted, and I got to tell you, that was about as easy as it could be. Um, you probably already know this from taking the other one off, but I'll share it with you just in case it saves you some time. You don't have to take off these two back bolts right here, the ones that hold on the rear torque converter, the driven unit. Um, I did just because I cleaned this all up, and it was much easier to clean off. But these two you can leave alone. There are only four bolts that hold it on. There are two back in there. You can see their heads on either side. And then there are two at the front. You can see these two right underneath here. Of course, right over here, these two. And at least on mine, I would assume it would be the same. On the bottom, there are nuts with lock washers. And those were all half inch on the bottom, just in case it saves you some time. All right. The next step is going to be hooking up the kill switch. But I disconnected off the old one and of course, of course the throttle cable, um, two pretty important things. So we'll cover getting those hooked up and then really the last step is going to be uh, putting the, the torque converter on, which um, will require uh, a separate purchase, which I will discuss and uh, help you out with. And then of course the true final step would be putting some gas and oil in it and giving it a shot. So um, I'll be right back and we'll discuss how to hook up the kill switch. Okay, 
Now let's discuss hooking up the kill switch. It's actually extremely simple to do, but if you don't exactly know what you're doing, um, the chances of you just stumbling upon and figuring out how this works probably isn't going to happen. So what I've done is there's a little clip underneath here, just a little black clip that I undid that exposed all these wires. The wires were exposed already, just um, let me get them out. You can see right here, I think you can see, this is the kill switch and there's this black, it's actually a yellow wire um, with a black sheath on it for protection coming from the kill switch. And all the kill switch or run switch does is it's just grounding out the spark. That's how it kills it, the same way that the, the switch on the front of the go-kart works. So all we need to do is take this kill switch that this is coming from the front of the go-kart, the switch mounted next to the steering wheel. All we're gonna do is connect this basically to this wire as well. Um, and that's gonna allow us to kill it from the front as well as having this kill switch here. Uh, what, our, what I really like about this engine is um, you've also got a oil, a, a little sensor in here that senses whether or not it's got oil and that kills the engine as well. That, that's a fantastic feature and obviously would have probably saved my last engine. But I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here. And what I'm gonna do is coming from the kill switch is this yellow wire right here that branches into this green connector here, right here. So I'm just gonna unhook, I'm gonna pop that loose. And this black wire that I just unhooked runs to the uh, little sensor that kills the oil, that uh, basically kills the engine if the oil is low. I'm simply gonna take this connector right here, and I have one that I, I just happen to have because I have a lot of connectors like this. I have a replacement one, this one's blue, but it's the same size as the green one. You can get this anywhere, Lowe's, AutoZone, even Walmart probably has it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut off this connector. I'm gonna strip this wire back. And then I'm also gonna do the same with the kill switch coming from the front of the go-kart. Now, I've got these two. I'm gonna twist them together just a little bit. I may end up having to strip a little more back just because the one, I'm, the one coming from the front is a significantly higher gauge. Looks like it's maybe a 16 as opposed to a 14 or is a, yeah, let's see. So here we go. I'm gonna twist these two together. And I'm gonna put this connector on. And I'm gonna crimp it with my crimpers. Make sure you get a good crimp on there. And now, we simply hook this back up. I'm gonna tie the wires back up into this clip. I know you probably can't see it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Let me take the camera. I'm gonna try to get a better view so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's our finished result here. This is the black clip I was talking about. And you just push this to the side and all the wires come out. So this may be a better view for you. Maybe I should have done this all along. I just don't have enough hands. So what you see here is, here's the yellow wire coming from the kill switch. And basically just on the other side of that connector, where it used to be a green connector right here, it's now my homemade blue one that has the kill switch wire from the front of the go-kart as well as this um, black wire that runs over here to this sensor that runs and checks to make sure there's oil. That's about it as far as hooking up the kill switch. Only two more connections left. Got to get the throttle cable hooked up. Then we got to get the torque converter mounted. And we should be riding here soon. Okay, now on to what will probably give you the most trouble of anything. And even this is pretty minor. And, and that is connecting the throttle cable. Uh, it's actually pretty simple. It's not hard to do at all. We've got our old throttle cable here. And basically, I'll give you the overview of it. Uh, the problem you have is that when you, the manual throttle, it does not release. So if you were to just hook up a throttle cable, 
you could accelerate but when you let go it would not decelerate so there's really just a couple things you need to do the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take a number 10 and you're going to loosen up this nut right here and as you'll see when i pull the throttle and let go it barely goes back but Loosen this up just a tad. And now let's see. Now, no problem at all. It, it goes back to too idle. Now I have heard there's some other people out there who are attaching return springs and connecting it um, to one of these holes right here. And then running over and drilling a hole over here in the side. And maybe, maybe you want to do that just for safety. It looks to me like there's going to be enough tension on the return spring to pull back. If not, then um, we'll have to do the same thing. Um, I'll give it a we'll give it a shot and see which way it works and if we need to do that. Okay, now let's talk about getting the throttle cable set up on here. Now, getting the throttle cable set up actually it's extremely easy. There's not much to do. Here's my old throttle cable. The only thing that I've done is I cut off the little lead tip on the end. Uh, that's, that's all that I've done. And that's all that you should need to bear to do as well. Now, one of the things that I'm gonna do, you don't have to do this. I'm gonna do this because it's gonna be easier to show you and it's gonna be easier to just to hook it up all together. I'm gonna take the air filter assembly off and you do that simply by removing these two number 10 bolts and then disconnecting this uh, one hose right here and that'll slide right off so let me take those two bolts out pop this off and then i'm going to show you how to hook the throttle up won't take you more longer than a minute or two okay now with the uh, air filter off see i just took the two bolts off disconnect the hose let the other hose connected no problems right here so what we're going to do i'm going to take this see if i can get the best angle on it i'm going to take this cable it's going to get threaded through here this little nut right here, get a better angle for you. This nut right here's got a hole in it. You just need to, you need to hold the nut with a number 10 wrench and loosen this Phillips screw out. And there's a hole in here and I'm just gonna thread this through. I'm doing this with one hand, so. So I'm gonna, got that. Now I'm just gonna tighten that screw down and then I'm going to simply mount the rest of the throttle cable underneath this bracket bracket right here. And that should be about it. Okay, now you can see what I've done. I've got cable fastened down here. I fastened the end of the cable here. Now one of the things I'm, I will need to do, which won't be a big deal, I'll use a zip tie. I am going to route this cable up. Um, and I'm just gonna hook it up to the to the bar up there um, Just to keep it up higher than this throttle weevil weaver just so it doesn't accidentally get caught I don't know that it would but um, I'm gonna be better safe than sorry And um, you can see that it returns quite nicely on its own now um, The only other thing you need to do is there's a this number 10 bolt right here You will need to loosen it up just a little bit so that the um, it comes from the factory pretty tight and, and if you don't loosen it up, this will have a hard time returning. Um, that should be about it as far as the throttle goes. Um, next, we will move on to installing the torque converter. All right, everybody, here we go. Throttle cable is all hooked up, works like a charm. Um, I have actually, as you can tell now, I went ahead and put the bar back on top up here. And I have uh, put gas and oil in it. It started on the second pull, and I actually have let it idle for about an hour now. I'm just letting it break in. It said to break it in um, with medium load. I think it said 50%. I figured letting it idle would be would at least be helpful because I know that once my children jump on it, there's going to be no such thing as a medium load. So whatever break in it gets, it probably has already gotten. Okay, last step. Last step is mounting the torque converter. And the only thing that you need is the original bolt is not long enough. So the only thing that you're gonna need, I just picked this up at Lowe's. 
you need a 5 16 fine threaded two inch bolt so i picked up a package of two and that's going to be all that it takes to to bolt the actual torque converter on um, i'm not thrilled with how little of the of the driver clutch actually makes it onto the shaft but from what i read online everyone else has been doing this and no one has said any problems um, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. So once we put our bushing on, which we have to so that it'll line up. There is very little, as you can see, very little of that to actually engage this Now, everyone else, that's what they claim they've been doing, and it's been working fine. So I'm going to go with it. I guess it's pretty strong, and not like you're putting uh, 100,000 pounds of force on it. So that's what we're going to go with, and we'll see if it works. Okay, we actually just got back from riding the go-kart for probably an hour or more, uh, the kids and I. Um, and it runs fantastic. Um, as you can see, I did break the, ch or we broke the chain off of it. Um, nothing to do with the new engine. Um, the master link broke. I probably didn't put it on right, but anyway, that's another story. And I also did end up putting a spring. I picked up a spring from Lowe's, and you can kind of see at the very top of the video. I did put a return spring on there. Um, it was working okay, but every now and then it would stick. So just to be safe, I put it on there. Now, I don't know how fast the original Yerf Dog would go because when I got it, the engine was in pretty bad shape. But I could get about 25 miles per hour out of the original. And with this new with this new Predator engine on there, I'm getting 32 out of it. And, and that's with me on it by myself. And I weigh about 170 pounds. So uh, factor that in. It's got a lot more torque. And uh, again, I'm getting more speed out of it than originally. And that's without any upgrades. And there are literally tons of upgrades. Now, while the engine was breaking in, I did pick up a piece of Lexan from Lowe's. Um, also known as plastic gold because uh, of how expensive it is and um, I drilled a few holes in it and used some zip ties to put this windshield on there it did come in quite handy don't know if you've had this problem before but those front tires love to kick up uh, sand when you're riding and the windshield knocked all that down I don't know if it affects the speed I don't know if it makes it faster by being more aerodynamic or maybe slower because of drag but again I got 32 miles per hour out of it I'm very happy with it I'm uh, very happy with the engine uh, e so um, I'm looking forward to a lot more, a lot more riding it uh, once I get this chain back on there. And if y'all have any questions, please feel free to post some comments. I'll be happy to help you in any way I can. Um, hope this helps you out. Thanks, guys.